right, so we gotta get number one to top dead center. We'll get into that in a second. And then we need to insert this with the red line on the gear at the top, right where top dead center is. Well, 28 degrees or whatever. I'll put the actual number here before top dead center. All right, timing. This ring gear has 149 teeth. So you take 149, you divide it by 360. That comes up to roughly 0.4138. And you multiply that times 26 degrees is what our target is. So we want it to fire 26 degrees before it gets to top dead center. So if top dead center was here, we want it to fire 26 degrees before. So what I did is I picked 11 teeth. There's 149 teeth. I picked 11 teeth and I want it to fire just before top dead center. You want it certainly on the compression stroke. There's two strokes. So the best way that I've found to do it is find top dead center, mark it, and basically back it up 11 teeth. So then if you think of it from the reverse, 11 teeth before it hits top dead center, it's going to fire and spark, and then it'll fi finish out the compression stroke. All right, so you want your number one cylinder to be on the compression stroke. So you can put your thumb over it. There's no spark plug wires on the entire engine. Trust me, it doesn't start with them, but just be careful with yours. Um, and you want to make sure this can, by, by hand cranking it, can start. So... All right, so I didn't have a ton of compression. So one of the ways to find out if your piston is in the compression stroke is to put your thumb over the hole and rotate the motor. I got some pressure, but I just wanted to make sure, so I verified it with the intake valve. Just prior to, or while it's in the compression stroke, the intake valve moved. Just after what I felt was top dead center, the exhaust valve opened up. All right, when you verify you're in the compression stroke, then you can put something soft in here, wooden or plastic, and you can verify that where the piston is. So right there, and I marked it here on the flywheel, right there is top dead center. You can kind of feel it go back and forth, right? So I marked top dead center on one of the teeth with white, and then calculated what 26 degrees would be, give or take, and marked that in red. So just before top dead center, we want it to fire. All right, so I know when I need to fire, so we're gonna put this back together, and uh, then we'll throw the magneto in. So another thing that I did kind of as, as a sanity check, you can see my white mark there is lined up with the seam of the case up on top of the motor. So generally speaking, we're at top dead center. So you put this at, you zero this, and then you move it to the assigned amount of teeth, 11 in our case. And you can see, I am eyeballing it now, but you can see that we're at 26 degrees. Obviously, if that went all the way around, that's 360. So just to sanity check that, it just doesn't seem like it's enough, so I had to double check the uh, degrees. So I think we're good. Okay, so piston one is now in the position to where it should fire. So I've got the magneto. You can see here, there's a little inspection port. It's a little red tooth right there. That's when it fires position number one. So this is the internal timing is all set right. That's the external timing. So now we need to get this part here, this part here to match up with this part here. And that gear matches up into there. So, slide this on there, I've already cleaned this up, I've already greased it. Now we wanna get this properly aligned without dropping this part.
All right, so it's in. The red line is still on top here. So now we just need to snug it down. All right, there she is, all installed. Powder coated, new wires. Same on the other side. One, six, three, two, five, four. Of course, it's too late to crank it, so I'll try tomorrow.